The federal government has vowed to crack down on buy now, pay later lenders by implementing tougher requirements for credit checking. The rise of these companies, such as Klarna and Afterpay, allow people to pay off their products over time. Joining me now to discuss this is entrepreneur, businessman and executive chairman of Yellow Brick Road, Mark Burris. Mark, thanks so much for your time. Good to see you. Maybe. What's your view on the government's reforms in this area? Why are they necessary? Well, there's been a lobby, obviously, by the banking system because the banks, of course, are regulated um, under the, regu the banking regulatory regime, which requires banks to employ what they call responsible lending rules when it comes to lending money to people. The question has been the whole way along is, is the transaction by the buy now, pay later businesses, are those transactions a credit transaction, in other words, lending money, or are they something else? So, obviously, the banks take the view, and as do a lot of consumer groups, take the view, that the buy now, pay later deals are credit. Therefore, credit rules should be applied to the borrowers. In other words, credit checks, at least some de minimis rules, should be applied to those borrowers. So the new proposals by Stephen Jones, the minister, um, are basically uh, uh, going to Im um, uh, impose upon BNPLs, buy now, pay later organisations, mm. to apply basic credit checks to the borrowers. Mm. Uh, and just a quick disclosure, a family member owns shares in a buy now, pay later company. Mark, the tech sector has been hit hard over the past year, this sector included. Jim Chalmers in his budget night speech warned of soft global economic headwinds. How do you see the Australian economy in the second half of this year? Um, I don't hold a great deal of um, uh, positive view on the Australian economy for the, greater, the later part of the, this year. And I, I'm talking about just generally gen, general economics mm. um, and general economically because yeah. the, the interest rate regime is way, way too prohibitive. They've gone, as far as I'm concerned, gone too far. And the question is how long they're going to go to stay too far. But the issue here is they're going to push, I think, economic development and growth down to below 2%. If they do something like that, that means people start losing jobs. When people start losing jobs, they start paying their home loans or, or in the case of uh, other sorts of debts, they start to run into debt problems. Small businesses start to go out of business. Employment starts to ratchet up from 35 to some other number. They're already predicting a 4.5%. So, um, so, Mark, uh, what, so you don't number. think that the rates needed to rise so aggressively to bring down inflation? I mean, you know, how else would they tackle inflation? Well, I know they... It, well, that, that's a very good point. But the question is, do they need to tackle inflation aggressively? So if you're trying to get inflation from 7% where it is right now, well, mm. last quarter, if you're trying to get inflation from 7% to 2 to 3%, that sounds ridiculous because you're talking about, like, you, you've got to reduce it by two-thirds. Mm. And the only way to do that, if the only way to do that is increasing interest rates, you're going to break something on the way through. For me, I think it should have been a much gentler approach. It should have gone a, over a longer period, a longer series of time, instead of having you know, 11 rate rises, of which we had four, four, 50, ba uh, 50 base point rises. So that's yeah. really like 16 rate rises in less months, in nearly 12 months. So that is way too aggressive. I'm not saying we don't need to reduce inflation at all. I'm saying we don't need to be setting a target of 2 to 3% right now. I mean, there's debate about whether the federal government's budget that it just handed down was inflationary, well, it w whether it will contribute uh, to rate rises going up more than they would have in the second half of this year. Do you have a view on that? Yeah, I have a view on it, and it's probably mildly contributive. In other mm. words, it might have a mild effect on it, but I don't think it's going to be in any, in anywhere able to change the, uh, the interest rate regime that's actually going to have the major effect on anyone with debt. So yeah. all the money that they're giving, they're, getting, they're giving to people who need the money. So I think that part of it's quite right. So they're a government. I mean, governments are here to government. They're, they're here to provide welfare where welfare is needed. So I don't really have an issue around that. And it's not like we need to withdraw all the, uh, withdraw all the liquidity out of the market and just go for a, a straight surplus. Mm. Governments need to give a bit of money back. So I don't really have a problem with it. I think it's so interesting to hear your view on the RBA raising rates too quickly because most um, economists I speak to on this program say they were too slow to start raising rates. But, but I suppose your point is that it's happened no, in quick... Yeah, that's happened in quick succession, which has had, you know, a, a shock, yeah. I suppose, for a lot of people who have um, home loans. Now, just quickly want to ask you about yeah, the US debt ceiling. This 
is going to be a global issue if the Republicans and Democrats can't come to an agreement on whether to raise the debt ceiling before it defaults, before the so-called X date. How worried are you about this? Um, well, I've seen, I've been through this, I've been through this process a number of times. I've seen this happen a number of times, and at the end of the day, it'd be a pretty brave Republican and or a Democrat mm. not to reach an agreement on the debt ceiling. Because what are they going to send the US dollar into a free, free fall? They're going to send the US economy into a free fall. They're going to send the whole world into a free fall. It'd be very brave politics for someone to do this. My feeling is that the, the, the last minute, like they did last time, the last time we went through this process, that they'll make the, they'll reach an agreement. It'll be some form of compromise. So, am I worried that they won't reach an agreement? I do. I, I'm not worried they will not reach an agreement. Am I worried that this gamesmanship that they're playing mm. um, does have an effect on markets right now? Definitely. It definitely has an effect on markets right now. Liquidity is at risk. Pricing is quite high. Anyone who needs to raise money right at the moment is raising it at a higher price or a premium price because they're paying the, you know, this, this so-called uh, risk factor that's being employed into the pricing of, of money. So if I'm lending you money, I'm lending you, you know, billions of dollars, I'm going to say to you, first up, listen, I'm a bit worried about the US debt crisis. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to have to charge you more just in case they don't reach an agreement. Yeah. That's the problem with all this rhetoric. Yeah. All right, Mark Burris, so good to have you tonight and look forward to having you in the program another time soon.